Welcome to Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast. It's your boy, Hatchy Hatches, in the building with my guy. What up, T? What up, man? What's happening, man? What's happening? What's, What's happening? The What's the dilly, dog? Look good, man. Got your little hair cut. You got a clean shave up oh, top. Oh, yeah, you know I had to do you it. You know what I'm saying? saying? You gotta look good, you know what I mean? You, know what put, mean? You, put, you put your little lip gloss on today with your little oh, lips, yeah, you, know. you know. I can't be out here <laughs> crusty, you know what I mean? You know, it's hard out here being a black man, you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? You out here looking crusty on top of that, that's 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 hey. not good. That's not a good thing. But okay. unfortunately, for like a guy like myself, you know, I'm Stay good blind. on my hygiene, you know what I mean? I'm good <laughs> on my hygiene and things of that nature. So, you know. Okay. All right. Well, she, as well, you should be. You're an adult. You're supposed to take a shower and brush your teeth. Exactly. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You know, you know. <laughs> All righty. Well, look, coming to the stage today, we got my man Ty Law, NFL Hall of Fame cornerback from Pennsylvania. I would yeah. say, uh, he going to say it later on. It's Aliquip, I think, but I'd be messing it up. I'd be butchering it. You know, I can't talk good. And went to the University of Michigan with a first round pick in 1995 at pick number 23 to the New England Patriots, where he won three Super Bowls. And then he went to the Jets for a couple stints, the Chiefs. And of course, the 2019, he joined you. Not me in the NFL Hall of Fame is with I'm glad you. I'm glad you. I'm glad <laughs> that you hurt. Said. That hurt my soul, though. It hurt <laughs> to say that. <laughs> man, that's so crazy, man. This is the second mission QB that we've had. I mean, not QB cornerback. Yeah. This is. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. This is the second cornerback from Michigan that we've had on this show. Uh, yeah. The first one was uh, um, uh, Charles, mean, Charles Woodson. Charles. Now Woody. we got. Yeah, yeah. Now we got uh, Ty Law on the show, man. So yeah. looking forward to chopping it up with him, man. And like I said, I haven't actually I haven't really talked to Ty, you know, since uh yeah, since he made the Hall of Fame. You know, I mm-hmm. you know, I get my little, you know, little congratulatory tweet. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I'm really not keen on really dealing with the Hall of Fame, but I give respect where respect is due. And so I don't wanna That's feel true. like I'm just, you know, an ass or whatnot. So, you know, I don't Some I just people do think you're just an ass. So Exactly. You know, I, I get it. But yeah, but I mean you know, you got to give guys respect, you know, um, and give them their roses. And so, yeah, definitely well-deserved, uh, as well as the other guys that uh, got inducted into the 2019 Hall of Fame. So looking forward to chopping it up with him. Absolutely. And he's become a CEO, has a vodka company coming out. So you guys are good to learn a little bit more about that. But coming up on Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast, Ty Law, NFL Hall of Famer, coming up next. Yee! Let's do it. And don't forget to subscribe on the Himalaya app or if you get your podcast. That's right. And if you want to see the video version of this, we know we you guys love hearing us talk. But if you want to see our handsome faces, well, my handsome face anyway, no, just go no. to my YouTube channel, <laughs> <laughs> youtube.com slash Tara Lawrence and check us out. And when you're on that channel, all your messages can go to me. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. He, he needs all the help. <laughs> so welcome to Get Your Popcorn Ready. It's your boy Hatch with my boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, T.O. is in the building, and my yeah. man, Ty Law, let me tell you mm-hmm. something. When a dude comes hey. with his popcorn he ready, came ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. He I'm came ready. out the womb ready. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> ready. You know he got? Hey, I'm ready, man. You see, he came ready. That's how I had to do when I played against him. I had to come ready. because I better know, come I, ready. Go get I your head knocked off. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I knew I had to deal with somebody that yeah. was a problem. I, I, yeah, you know what? The, the one that I wish we could have... You know, matched up against, but you were just tougher than me, man. You know, I had the broken foot, you had the broken leg, you came back. I was like, man, I can't. <laughs> can't do it. CTO <laughs> was tougher than me, man. I couldn't do it, bro. Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that would we'll have been fun, man. You know, just uh, you know, two top dogs going at it in, in, in the Super Bowl, man. You know, it's like that's the matches you want for because most of the time, yeah, you know, you're going up against somebody, it's like, you know you're going to win. You know what I mean? It's right, like, right, that ain't going right. to be a challenge. You, know, you you feel me? You know, right. some DBs you go up against, you're like, oh, this is a walk in the park. You know what <laughs> I mean? So it's like that 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 matchup would, would have been something, you know, especially for entertaining for the fans, you know, being us there. But like I said, to yo, you tough goddamn guy. Hey, <laughs> hey you, well, you, well, you know what, T-Law? <laughs> let, let, me, let me go back and talk about the guy who was the walk in the park. Because now that you say that, that bothers me. Because you two... You would actually look at another player like, oh, this is a walk in the park. So I'm imagining, Ty, if I lined up against you, you're going to look at me like a walk in the park. And I'm going <laughs> to tell you right now, I wasn't going to be no walk in the hey, park. Hey, but you know what? You supposed to have that attitude. You know what I mean? All he, right. He, yes, sir. Because, yes, sir. Hey, when I go up, hey, hey prove me wrong. You know, right, you respect exactly. everybody. Once you're in that league, 
You yeah. got to respect everybody, but at the same time, when you feel that you're the best yourself and yeah. you know somebody else across for you that he ain't on your level until he prove it to you. you gotta prove you know, it. if you come out in the game and you prove it to me, hey, you get all the love and respect in the world. But until then, yeah. Oh, I, oh, I got you. I got you. Oh, man. You know, no, you good. Mm-hmm. We we talk about that though, because again, me and T were both small college players, and I think T has he had played his career with that chip on his shoulder because he was always yeah. trying to prove that it didn't matter if he had eight catches already. Like I'm trying to prove it to you on his ninth catch, and kind of we talk about that as he goes back mm-hmm. in his career and talking about that same thing. But if I was a DB, Ty, I would have had that same mentality against this bum right here. Wow. He would have been a walk in the park. <laughs> you know what I mean? He would have been a walk in the park. So, you know. Come on hey, now. Man. Hey, man, hey. if somebody looks at you at the walk in the park, bro, you might need to I, reevaluate. I ain't no, <laughs> I ain't no walk in the park. Jump, no, 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 you can, you can, Hatch can take the top off. You, 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 no, I know you, that. You go in there slipping on him. You go in there slipping on him. You go get got. But you yeah, know how it is. Like, girl. some guys... <laughs> Let, let's yeah. keep it real. Some guys get there, you'd be like, how the hell you get through the combine and get dragged? How are you on the team? I mean, right. that's just, yeah. I mean, everybody, yeah. professional athlete to you, how many, how many guys on your team, you know, and I love all my teammates, but sometimes it's like some other guys got cut, here. should have yeah. been here. Yeah. How are you, yeah. how are you doing this? Because, you know, it's just the way it is. No, let, yeah. let's talk about that because, again, we always have this discussion in the NFL because people think that the best players are, you know, always – I'm like, it's not that. It's there's there's it's a numbers thing. It's a money thing. So right. what mm-hmm. did you see in your career throughout that process, especially being up there in New England? Because it seems like you guys always had more underachievers, um, right. you know, on that squad. So, like, what did you see during that process in New England? I, I mean – Coach Belichick, for one, he he has a value on you. No matter no matter what, you can be here in the eyes of the league, but as far mm-hmm. as their team and the concept, he puts a certain cap on you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Whether you know the negotiating room, maybe uh, a million here, higher, a million lower. But if you're like double, that's just the cap for what they want to do for the team, mm-hmm. and and he sticks to it. So and you got to think about all the guys that went through, and it's not a bad thing because when you sit there and go to uh, in, in 20 years or the nine, 10 Super Bowls, you're doing yep. something right. So, yep. I mean, we can all yep. complain, and that's the only time that you will ever get into anything with Coach Belichick. Everybody think he's just, you know, stuffy, stuck-up guy. He's not like that. The only time he a pain in the ass is when it's come contract negotiation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time he don't like Bill, you know yeah. what I mean? But he sticks to his guns, and that's what it is. And that's why a lot of guys have to move, move on. I don't think it's always, you know, right. I, I, I really believe if if you kept our team together that with the first three and, and like myself, Willie, and we mm-hmm. see more and we didn't have to just get moved. Mm-hmm. I mean, we probably could have got a, a definitely, we definitely got another one, but it was like, mm-hmm. you know, we probably would have went and competed for a couple more, but mm-hmm. they still had the success with different guys. And he just knows how to get better. Is I think the one thing about Belichick that stands out, whoever comes and beats up on New England has a great game. He wants Belichick, put, <laughs> Belichick puts that right there. And mm-hmm. he have a chance to go out and get you because that's how Wes Welker came. Danny Amendola, they happen to have good games. You mm-hmm. would never sit there and put them in the same category as you guys as a number one receiver can put them on the outside. But right. you know they gave them, they gave them hell. You know, gave us right. hell for, the, for whatever reason. And Belichick is gonna get them into the system because he likes guys that can play that he don't have to, you know, pay an enormous amount of money because because mm-hmm. yeah, he he believe in the team concept. Team well, yeah, it seems concept. like he takes uh yeah, it seems like he takes the business approach when mm-hmm. it comes to that. And then he he's like he's like he wears a lot obviously he wears a lot of hats, but when it comes to coaching, he does that. And mm-hmm. as you said, when it comes to dealing with contracts and then obviously the management part of it, then he puts on that other hat, which you just mentioned about, like you said, you know, putting a cap on on guys and he feels like you're maybe worth this. And then like I said, he looks at the numbers. It's almost like what happened with the Bulls with uh with Scotty Pippen and, and, and Reinsdorf and, and all those guys, when, mm-hmm. when Scotty felt like he needed to be paid a certain amount of money, he didn't get paid. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Scotty was easy, like one of the top five, top ten athletes, you know, uh, in the league Playing, at that time. Yeah. But he was paid like right. he was like thinking maybe about one hundred and twenty seconds. Yeah, eighty-one yeah. or something stupid. Something like <laughs> yeah, this. Make, yeah, make, make, makes it makes no sense, you know, whatsoever. Yeah. But it but it happens, you know what I right. mean? And as an athlete, because we're sitting on the other side of it. Why aren't you seeing what everybody else is seeing? Right. You know, everybody, you know, knows this. Why 
why I might have to fight with my own team that I did this much for, but that's right. just business. You got to sometimes tr- take the personal out of it. But when you put your heart and soul into something, as we know, it's like it's hard not to take it personal, mm-hmm. you know? Because why would we go Why would we go there that, well, if I'm not this, well, let me cover the other guy here. I don't got to cover T.O. Let somebody else right. cover yeah, somebody else. <laughs> let, me, let me go take number two. Already. You know what I mean? So you feel me? So if you ask me to do that and follow this man where I could be on the highlight at the end of the day, damn it, pay me as such. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. already. Exactly. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you what everybody want to know, because I, I want to know. Right. Could T.O. have played for Bill Belichick? That's, I, yes. I, I just... Yes. Yeah, I, no, I mean, because again, his because people think Bill Belichick doesn't put up with antics, but he does. Long as you performing, as and he was gonna perform. You see what and I'm that, saying? And, and that's and that's what at the end of the day, that's what's going to happen. So you would have never heard anything. You talking about when you come in and you adapt to the locker room? You know, mm-hmm. To is his own person. He's his own player. But everyone's respect that he ain't in the mm-hmm. Hall of Fame. Which, by the way, To I was an advocate from day one. There's no way um, in hell you should have had to wait a second. You know what I mean? So, hey, it, hey, man, so that's, you know, <laughs> being in there and, and, and a, a guy that had to wait a couple years, you was one of those exceptions that shouldn't have had to do it. So I just want to put that on, put that on wax. Now, that was, that was a, that was a, that was a foul, a shame, a flag, whatever you want to call it. But, <laughs> P.I., right, P.I. Right, exactly. That's, that's P.I. right there. But, yeah, now, I just think, you know, when Coach Belichick, he knows he has a talent, you know, he's going to put up with more. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, because you think about it, you're always going to be an example made out of someone. He knows how to pick and choose who the example going to be. Now, yeah. if it's been situations where somebody come in later, they don't, and they might be on that practice squad, you can't afford to come in late. No, okay, no. you might get sent packing, yep, and yep. You know, that's an example. I want all y'all to look at that. Man, let Tom Brady <laughs> came in. Right, so yeah. So come on, man. If I was in my prime, I came in late, you know, smack no, the no, list, yeah. hey, man, but all right, man, you get a little fine. If that... If that. Moving. So, yeah, exactly. That. But when you come in and you're talented and you can play mm-hmm. and he respects you, and that's the thing is, Belichick has to respect you. Mm-hmm. And he definitely will respect, you know, T.O. When you're talking about mm-hmm. the atmosphere with a whole bunch of, you know, alphas like any, but we had right. some, we had some y'all dogs. Had some, y'all had you, some you dogs. You had some dogs. Right. You know what I mean? So he would have fit right in because it's the dog mentality. We don't care what you do, how you go about your life off the field or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. When you come in here to work, it was work. It's a lot of guys work. came as like, damn, this is this is work. It it wasn't fun. Right. It wasn't fun going to work. We made fun out of it, but exactly. it wasn't like fun going to work in New England. But guess mm-hmm. what? You might be miserable as hell sometimes, but mm-hmm. you're winning. On Sunday, you're happy though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. On Sunday, you're happy. But going to work every day, because a lot of times, you know, some organizations you can make your tea time at three o'clock. You know, mm, some guys yeah. go golf, they make a tea time. Oh, you ain't making tea time in New England. I guarantee you that. I don't um, give a damn what reservation you put up there. Right. It's going to be dark by the time you get there. <laughs> right. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Spe- speaking of and speaking on this uh, this idea of, like you just mentioned, uh, the notion of, okay, you're performing. Uh, you're performing well. You're an alpha guy. Um, New England now has a guy. I feel like he's an alpha guy. He hasn't had the last couple of games. He hasn't really played well. Uh, there's mm-hmm. been a little controversy with, you know, some former guys who are now in the media uh, that have been very critical of him. And we're speaking of Cam Newton. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think last weekend, whatever last game he played, he got yanked or what have you. He's not performing very well. What do you think is going on in New England right now um, with that situation moving forward with Cam, obviously, as a starting right. quarterback? Right. Um, we'll have to see how things fare out from there. But right. what do you think? is going on and how we'll move forward with Cam Newton. I, I think Coach Belichick is still going to put him as a starting quarterback, but yes. his margin for yes. error is going to be uh, a little, little tighter, you know, yes. now. But I think when Cam is somewhat at a disadvantage in the sense where you got what, nine guys, nine starters that opted out, offensive yeah. linemen, you know, the, the, the receiving core isn't hey, scaring Steve. anybody. You know, right. I mean, it's, it's no grunt. So understand what he's working with, because everybody can talk about the system all they all they want to. You know, New England, the system, system. If you don't have the players to play within the system, your great players are going to be average at best. If you sit there and don't give Tom no weapons, no protection, he ain't going to be Tom ready to go. You got to have right. pieces to help. You know what I mean? I know Cam's athletic ability would probably make up for some of those things, but I, I look at it like, you know, 
with all due respect, like Tom is the greatest that ever did it. But mm-hmm. if you give him no protection and mediocre For, receivers, receiver, right. what's going what's, what's gonna to happen? Because guess what? Yeah. Cam, at least Cam can run. Right. He, you right, know what right. I mean? Tom so would look average. Tom, right, yeah, and he would be look more average. He would know the system a little bit better. So I, I don't think, you know, Cam, he's – getting criticism for things that he's not playing with a full deck, in my opinion. Right. You know, and he's, not, he's not playing with a full deck. Right. right. And so uh, obviously, like I said, I, I, I chimed in and I saw I saw the uh, the little snippet uh, where Jeff Garcia, my former co- uh, uh, quarterback, you know, he obviously went off uh, on uh, on Cam and uh, it basically told him that uh, he basically said, uh, you go into this game with two touchdowns, four interceptions, you threw you threw what? Three more interceptions. You get yanked yeah. in the second half. There's nothing good going your way. Why are you dressing like that to bring more attention to yourself? It's just <laughs> like I'd be trying to ask the equipment managers, put me in the jock, jock sock court cart and sneak me in the back door and I'll show up <laughs> on the field and do the best that I can. So I chimed in. I saw that. Mm. And then my, my response was, he has a point. You know what I mean? I was like, and in and, and so many ways, he has a point. And then I had to go clarify and kind of clean that up because mm-hmm. everybody started going off on me and like that I agree with him. And so basically my point was that Jeff is not, it's not, it's not really kind of how he said it. It's kind of, it's what he said versus how mm-hmm. he said it. Mm-hmm. And so I think what he really meant ideally is that from an optic standpoint, based on obviously social media, that it seems like Cam spends more time putting effort into his social media, his dressing, his wardrobe, or what have right. you. And mm-hmm. Jeff feels like he probably should put more of that into his game prep, game planning, yeah. and things of that nature. So mm-hmm. I had to put that out there to kind of clean up, kind of, kind of what he said in a sense. Now, if he, if he didn't, I, if he didn't mean that, then he didn't mean that. But I, that's what I took from it. I didn't think it was a slap at him talking about, you know, the way he dresses and attire, things, fashion, or what have you, or him being a black guy. This not, you know, obviously we're in a heightened climate right. where right. racism and racial tension is, is 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 in the air. So everybody wants to, you know, point the finger or just start going, oh, it's it's a race thing. This not the other. I don't see it that I didn't see it that way, and I don't see it that way. But well, as point, I well, point, it, point it out for the for the for the listeners that. Again, you dress nice, Ty Law, right? Ty, you used to put the suit right. on, right? right? You guys right. didn't spend any more time looking in your closet because the way Jeff right. made it seem is he's right. at home for hours upon hours looking right. through the closet and trying right. to find and match socks with the hat. He wasn't doing right. all that. No, it's no, we, we wasn't out. doing that, but we had, but it was mandatory on, at least on our teams back in the day, that you had to right. put it to go. You yeah, know what right. I mean? That's how it was. But, I, but think about this. I think... Everyone knew how Cam dressed with, with his hats and his right. swag. Like right. you know that 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 that's not me. That's Cam. Right. But when you sit there, you don't hear as much of that when he was in Carolina. Now you come to New England, the more Big you know market. conservative approach for them. I mean, a different <laughs> a different market. You're coming f- from Tom Brady. You know, you go on these wild things to you know Giselle Boonston, You know, <laughs> tailor made this kind yeah. of suit. You know, real yeah. toned down. You know, corporate look. You know what I mean? We right. more we was considered the corporate team. So when Cam brought his swag, his style to New England, it's flair, yeah. you got it, 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 it's, it's flamboyant, which they know mm-hmm. that that's Cam. But if that doesn't resonate in the winds and you're following Tom mm-hmm. Brady, right. so everything is going to be magnified a little bit more. They're going to try to blame right. everything, you know, why you're not playing to this level. Mm-hmm. If you were that good, Tom Brady would have done this. Tom mm-hmm. Brady don't wear that. You putting all your attention into this. Why aren't you studying? Why you? Tom Brady would never thought it. He's getting a lot of comparisons. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, to Tom based on, and just yeah, the, yeah. right based on the history of New England. Mm-hmm. Right, and I think yeah, honestly, like you said, and you know, for me, I, I like I said, I love Cam, so I didn't want like I, said, mm-hmm. I didn't want people to think that I was jumping on Jeff bandwagon as far as mm-hmm. what you know how critical he was of him, but I just wanted to kind of clean up based on my interpretation of what he was trying to say. It basically, and, and you said it, you basically essentially said it yourself. There's going to be a lot of comparisons based on what Tom has done with the New England organization. Everybody right. has to realize Tom and Cam are two different people. Two and different as I said, I, I, I love Cam. And I think what people are looking for is for Cam to play like that 2016 MVP Cam that we know that he can mm-hmm. be. But you alluded to it earlier. 
when when he's limited with the, with the the number of weapons resources that he has around him, then it's going to be tough. But as a quarterback, knowing the type of caliber of quarterback that he is or was and he can be, this is where everybody's going to be critical of Cam. Is because mm-hmm. now they're going to say, okay, well, well, Tom can maybe make mm-hmm. lemonade out of lemons. Cam, you were an MVP at one point in time. Mm. If you want to be thought of as one of those top tier quarterbacks, then they're looking for you. You got to do, do it too. You yeah. gonna, yes, they're going to look for him to do the same thing. Right. Obviously, line play, protection, all of that has to come into play. But if you look at some of the highlights, Cam missed some open receivers. That's why everybody's going to be overcritical. And then again, they're going to be, yeah, they're going to dip over here. And then again, they're going to highlight things that really don't right. matter, like his wardrobe his attire things of that nature but as we all know this is how cam dresses so like i said i wasn't trying to uh again jump on the bandwagon but i wanted to clear up on what i thought or interpreted that jeff was trying to say but like i said his play is not really on par with his wardrobe right (laughs) and and that's the problem yeah that's the problem problem. yeah Yeah, your wardrobe cannot be winning and you not that's right exactly because guess what if you're winning you can go out there and wear anything that's you how, want. You can wear a clown suit. And they be like, exactly. oh, that, that, that's it right there. That, that's, that's the style I'm gonna right have there. That's it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put, I'm gonna put on the big curly hair next year, too. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So, yeah, we, we're here with five-time Pro Bowler Ty Law. So, I know you're from the I'm Midwest. Right? Went to – and we're going to get into that, right? Went to uh, uh, P- Pennsylvania, right from Pennsylvania. Yeah. I uh, went to football. Michigan, right? Mm-hmm. Had a great career right now. Of course – from the outside looking in, everything's gravy, right? So give us some things that you might have went through during your career that people don't know about that made you maybe want to retire early or maybe like, uh, is football even for me? Because um, we always try to get into perspective of people look at you like you got it all figured out. You got everything, mm-hmm. right? You went from college to the Hall of Fame. Life is beautiful, mm-hmm. right? Uh, well, well, for me, you know, I came from, a, you know, a, a top high school program, you know, uh, custom, you know, to winning, but you look at, you know, the, the career and you don't think that you have, you know, struggles. You don't feel that people doubted who you were. You know, right. I was a All-American coming out of high school. And, uh, but when I went to Michigan, I realized that I was just, I was just a number. You know what I mean? I was like the last recruit I decided to go there because I had committed to Georgia Tech, you okay. know, coming out. But no one, even in my own hometown, as much as they support me, Think that I was gonna play. Oh, he good, but he ain't that good. Michigan good. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I went to Michigan, I was the like ninth, tenth guy on the depth chart. Wow. You know what I mean? And I and I took that, you know, personal. So, you know, even playing, I never got the respect, the respect to, to go along with I thought I was playing. So I was always fighting that, you know, and I was a I start end up cracking the lineup as a freshman, but I didn't have the respect amongst my peers. So my freshman year, it was miserable. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, because they didn't like me. I'm playing with all four or fifth year seniors and I'm freshman out there, took one of their homeboys jobs. So I hated going to the road because nobody on the defense was like me. Mm-hmm. So as we come out for the draft, I decided because I had issues at home, you know, uh, uh, you know, drugs and things like that. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, my story is pretty you know, much out there, but mm-hmm. I decided to leave. Mm-hmm. And same thing. Could he play coming out of Michigan? Could he, I mean, no one. <laughs> you know, thought anything of me. So I wrote to the NFL and they said I would go fourth through seventh round. Wow. So at the time, you know, it was Bobby Taylor, like Jimmy Hitchcock, Tyrone Poole, those guys, you know, and they were, I'm like, well, shit. They what about your boy? Yeah, what about I'm, your yeah, boy? Yeah, 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 exactly. But it was no love. And and y'all need to give me Joey Galloway address because, I mean, I need to send him a Rolex or something. Cause, man, because when he ran that 418 to Oh, my phone started ringing off the hook. You know what I mean? I'm like, what nobody, but with Joey Galloway, he ran a 41840. So now everybody start, you know, come, hey, he can play because when I played against, when we played against Ohio State, mm-hmm. it went down. Mm-hmm. You know, he had yep. three catches in two years. I had three catches in two years. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so that's what it was. And I, and I was all of him. So he actually helped me, but even come to New England, I got booed. Mm. Who the hell is this? Boo. So I was, <laughs> I dealt with that in New England. Boo his ass. You know what I mean? Wow. Cause they, because they wanted an offensive guy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, and I came in with Curtis Martin and all that, but yeah. it was a lot more fanfare for even Curtis, you know, oh, as a third sure. round than it was for me because they didn't want a DB and they took a chance on me. So I was always fighting, you know, that mm-hmm. way. And in the league, 
I feel like I was fighting for my just due then, you know, getting passed over for Pro Bowls. I'm having some of the best years. People didn't throw at me all the time, but I had to have five, six, seven picks. My best mm-hmm. season when I ain't had nothing. I'm just, I'm just locking, locking it up. Mm-hmm. But I would never get that and realizing that, you know, and it was just frustrating from that standpoint. So I always felt that I had to prove myself every right. time, every year, no matter, you know, how good I got, no matter how many accolades I may have got because the next year it started all over again. It's mm-hmm. a fluke. It's you know what I mean. So mentally, how much, how much I was confidence did there. you have going through that process? How much, how was your confidence throughout oh, that process? My my confidence never wavered. It was just other people they thought about me. So I had the mm-hmm. mentality of okay, I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm gonna prove mm-hmm. you wrong. Watch, put me on them, coach. I got it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That was just my mm-hmm. mentality of because I don't even think, you know, a lot of coaches was wondering like, can 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 he do it? You know, mm-hmm. then they was talking about at one point moving me back to safety because they didn't think my speed, my top end speed was that of a corner. Right. You know what I mean? Wow. I done been through all that. I said, I'm a damn corner. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and I mean, so I always just had to feel like, you know, I, I proved myself at the end of the day. And it was never, it was never easy. Even, you know, getting into the hall of fame, you know, you get passed over, you get passed right. over. Mine was different. I know I wasn't as clear cut the most, cause I had my whole career like that. So yo, that was clear cut. There was no mm-hmm. question about it. So it's like, okay, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That that was wrong. So now when it comes to me, it's like talking about statistically, you know, got the, you know, it was the like champ Bowl. actually helped me. Yeah, I didn't have Pro Bowls, but like champ, you know, if he got 12 Pro Bowls and that's my guy. And mm-hmm. that would, this would have probably hurt it more, you know, that the year that I got in than anything. Cause I'm going direct, direct head to head competition with another cornerback. Mm. And everybody touted him as, you know, you know, one of the best all time and the guy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, from a statistical standpoint, it's like, OK, you know, I got more interceptions, more Super Bowls, mm-hmm. more touchdowns, more yards. You know what I mean? So it's yep. like, right. how could if I had to wait, you know what I mean? It's like this would have this one would have hurt it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But some guys just, you know, breeze, breeze, breeze through. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I always had to fight it, even when it came to careers done having been in four Super Bowls, having three championships, That's having awesome. the same amount of picks. And I'm not claiming I'm Deion Sanders, but I had the same amount of interceptions he had. He had nine touchdowns, I had seven. We both got wow. 53. What yeah, else people do you don't, People do? don't realize that. People don't realize exactly. that. Y'all both have 53 picks. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But And when people don't throw at you, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that, you always had, because we was always basically just, we, we, we covering the number one option, but Mm-hmm. It's not always that they're going to throw at you, you know, like that. So when you look at that kind of stuff, but you're never, I was never put in that category. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Of that. And, and that's fine. It just made me hungrier. Say, mm-hmm. I can do that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that, it, that, it, bo- it that tough, bothered man. me. That bothered me my whole career. I was never put in the category of a number one. But that's just besides me. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I was number one, but, you know, I mean, I got, I, not, and I, was, I got paid as that because, you know, the whole thing was coming up and I had to go into the GM, you know, at the time myself, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, me and my agent played that. He wanted to talk to you. Okay, fine. Right, and, right. you know, when Deion Sanders still, you know, signed for the 50, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, right. I knew what was going on. I was playing dumb as hell. I was, I was playing it. I'm a, I'm a businessman at the end of the day. You know what All I mean? Right, so yeah, yeah. he came and I came in there talking to him and they was like, you know, look, we doing this Dale Carter and we put you right here. He had just signed his new contract. I said, Dale Carter. Uh-huh. I said, Deion Sanders, I just seen $50 million. <laughs> well, it wasn't real money. It's, it's bad. I said, all I seen was 50, 50 million. million. <laughs> it's, it's real to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 So, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, I, I, I played that and I was like, look, I'm not claiming to be Deion Sanders. Mm-hmm. But guess what? I'm the damn prime time of New England. On this team, you know right? exactly. I, on this team, exactly. I'm prime. Exactly. So I, need, exactly. I, need to be, I need to be paid like that. You know what I mean? Exactly. Right? And that's how I was down. You know, that's right. classic. Yeah. Again, so I'm going from, um, again, that new England locker room. And then you went to the, uh, of course you went to the jets from that locker room. Speaking of pauses, let's take a pause for the calls. Guys looking to last longer and get your Rocky Balboa on and go a few extra rounds. And do you want to be confident every time it's time for sex? I know there's a lot of you guys out there that may have the case of the preemies. That's premature. I'm not going to say it. But if you don't want to be that, go to BlueChew.com. BlueChew.com has the first ever chewable that brings your performance into the bedroom to another level. Check this out. They've got the same active ingredients that are in Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. Since they're chewable, they can work faster. 
You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And this is uh, and this stuff is cheaper than those other two. So this is a no brainer. Basically, if you like sex, you'll like BlueChew.com. Plus, you don't need to go to the doctor's office or spend time waiting in the pharmacy line. Blue Chew's online physician consult is free. And once approved, your order ships straight to your door in discreet packaging. Here's a great deal for you guys. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first order free when you use promo code GPR. Just pay $5 in shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com, promo code GPR. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com, promo code GPR. Hey, Hatch, man, you got to tell me how your, how your workout's been going, man. And I know, you know, you and myself, we, we have to be examples for our youth. So I know you're around Absolutely. a lot of your kids. You know, I'm sure, you know, you want to be in the best physical shape that you can be. So are you giving them any tips on your progress as far as, you know, what you're doing in your workout routines, what you're taking, things of that nature, because they look up to us. So what you got for them? You know what? I have been telling the kids that they need to try the uh, new Orgain powder. It's an Orgain protein powder, and it's absolutely been working. Fantastic. Have It's absolutely been working and has fantastic results for my kids. Right? It's an absolute game changer. So thanks to Orgain, their sport plant-based powders helped me get the most out of my workouts, and I've been feeling absolutely great. The, right? the Orgain sport protein powder is a unique blend of organic ingredients and help build strength and optimize both performance and recovery. I mix it into my smoothie and my shake for a quick on the go drink. If I need an extra spark or to start my workout or want to stay sharp throughout the day, I reach for the sport energy drink. It's packed with electrolytes and adaptogens for optimal performance, no matter what I'm doing. We all know how you recover is just as important as your workout. Orgain also has a sport recovery powder that I've been using religiously. Right. It replenishes tired muscles with unique blend of plant based organic ingredients, including adaptogenic mushrooms to help reduce inflammation. Thanks to Orgain, I finally found the best clean products to help keep me healthy and maximize my performance. And right now you can save 20 percent off your first order. Plus, when you subscribe, you can save more. Try Orgain dot com slash popcorn. That's T-R-Y-O-R-D. G-A-I-N dot com slash popcorn for 20% off of your first order plus extra savings when you subscribe. Try Orgain dot com slash popcorn. Hey, you know what? Speaking <laughs> of uh, receiving, you know who was nice, man? Uh, hmm. Y'all remember Jimmy Smith? Of course. I was in yeah, Jacksonville with Jimmy Smith. Bruh, yeah. that dude right there, man. Hey, man, yeah. that, that dude was real deal, man. You had to bring, yeah, you had to bring your lunch pail with him, man. Right, so, right. so again, like we uh, we we're gonna go we'll go over your top five in yes. a minute. Then, so we'll go okay. again receivers because we've had some other DBs on on here, and mm-hmm. what we always try to explain to the audience is if you want to know who the best was at the position, ask the people who had to guard right. them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not writers, not somebody right. you know the no. quarterback. Like, I got to see this dude who was seeing him every single time because again. Right. Right. For four quarters, it's a whole different story to guard somebody than just to see him one or two times, you know, once every two or three years. Because mm-hmm. for DBs and all stuff, me and T, we have a total different uh, perspective from DBs because we went against different DBs. Right. At the same right. time, we already know who the guys was. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, so give us your top five receivers then that you went up against your career. So, it's, uh, like, hey, hey, no, I, I would always say, even though I didn't have a uh, command, uh, I didn't have um, like a problem, you know, with him. But Jerry, right. you know, is 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 the goat. But yeah, look, yeah, you Jerry, talk about now, Jerry now when I say that, for me. I mean to for him, you know, not to have the uh, size and the power of To and Moss, and for him to do the things that you know he has done in the longevity and how mm-hmm. hard he worked. And I mean, you got you got you got to give it up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. like he he did it for a long time at a level and championships and everything else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And but, but to me, it's also about matchups. Like I ain't mm-hmm. gonna I ain't gonna lie. Like I would rather because mm-hmm. I think it's the matchup from a matchup standpoint. I'll rather go up against you know somebody bigger, not as quick and shifty. That's gonna mm-hmm. make you run around like a little net. That's knowing you probably ain't even gonna get the ball, and I gotta chase you, t- chase you right. around. I, I'd <laughs> right. rather go outside. For me personally, I'd rather go outside and I'll take my chances on the number one receiver than have to go in there 
and do all these option route tracing Julian Edelman and right, even though I yeah. know that advantage will be to me, but right. because of the position that they play, man, I don't man, you don't want to do that. So I think matchups mm-hmm. got a lot to do with it. So but so as okay. far as top five, I would say Jerry. Mm-hmm. I would say from uh um uh, a stamp a power seven, but that can beat you anyway. T.O. Moss, I think because Moss, you can get him at the line of scrimmage. You know what I mean? If you if you can get him at the line of right, scrimmage, right, you right. know, he's more of a, a deep ball and then you got Moss and everything else. But mm-hmm. I feel like if I got my hands on him, I'm stronger, you mm-hmm. know, I'll win. Okay. You know, and then, and uh, T.O. is like, he big and strong as me. Because mm-hmm. I was I was trying to intimidate people. I try to get my hands on you and then right. take the quarterback mm-hmm. off you real quick. You know what I mean? Right, a lot of times right. it's like, man, I'm just going to go do the quick jam and hopefully the receiver get away from you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then you got to go to your number two. But T.O. Right. can run through it. So you had to be there. He had the speed, you know, to get over top. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's why I put, you know, T.O. there as far as matchups against me. Okay. Now, Marvin Harrison <clears throat> was <throat> a guy that, damn it, he was quick. He was fast. But if I got my hands on him again, it was, it was over. over. Right. He was too small. But right. they start, you know, dropping him back after I start getting on his face. So they do that little <laughs> short motion. Oh, yep. I was mad as hell. I was like, oh, come on, man. Yeah, you know, that little zip. Hey, be doing running, running, running behind the other guy, so that was a little bit harder. But I always say Jimmy Smith because you know mm. I'm coming up in there as a dog. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna intimidate you. I'm gonna try to get up in your face. I'm gonna try to because Belichick he he let me get a flag a game. He knew that. Mm. I said, Bill. So that's why I really probably and it's not talked about much, but I probably one of the most flag corners because it was intentional. Mm. I'm gonna do it early. He said, just do it early and let it go. And that's why I mm-hmm. love Belichick because I come up and. I'm all up in here. I know I'm now, the flag. Now explain, I'm like, explain, all game. explain to the audience what your your advantage was to get the flag. Like explain, because me, me and T know like, I, what you're trying right. to do. Well, well right. the, the advantage was was getting into him mentally. You know what I mean? Okay. Because, you know, challenging it. And a lot of times, like, we will get a shell, uh, whether, whether coverage, let's say if it's a two deep coverage or three coverage, Belichick will say, look, you on your own. We're going to get a shell, but we're rolling over to the other side. Mm-hmm. So I was on my own a lot. So for me to establish myself early, saying that I'm going to challenge you, I got the right away to get a flag. Mm-hmm. So whether it was holes or grab, this is going to happen all game. You know? All day. I, all game. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that was right. a part of that was part of the mind trick. You know what I mean? Because, hey, you, you got to. If I'm going to buy myself over here, and, and if the coaches give me the okay, as long as I mm-hmm. do it early, I'm going to take that flag. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just to establish myself a certain right. way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and cool. like I said, that was, all, that was all part of the game. But you had the coach's approval, like I said. But um, like and the other ones, he like whether it's six and I always got to give props to Jimmy Smith because you couldn't intimidate that dude, man. He coming, yeah. he coming right, he coming right back at you, and he was fast as hell too. Yeah, you didn't realize how right. fast that dude was. Yeah, yeah you're was not. Saying. You know what? You're not the only one that has mentioned Jimmy Smith. Uh, I've heard his name a couple of times, and obviously, mm-hmm. like I said, you know, there's a lot of things that obviously ended. You know his, you know his his career obviously with right. you know some of the personal problems, things of that right. nature. But uh, I've heard his name come up a few times where he was a, he was a problem. And if you look at his body of work, especially playing with Brunel, um, mm-hmm. obviously Keith McCardell on the other side, Ooh. those guys, like I said, when you talk about duo of receivers, Jimmy Smith and like I said, Keith uh, McCardell, Cardell, yeah. those guys was a problem. And if you look, like I said, just watching and just mm-hmm. like right now, just visualize some of the hi- the highlights. When you talk about a guy that's big, physical, that can obviously run, run nice mm-hmm. routes, things of that nature. Again, hate that his career was cut short because of some right. of those things. But, yeah, he definitely could have been one of those top receivers um, yeah. at the end of the day. And if he had a qu- qu- quarterback that can, yeah. you know, get get him the ball because Keenan McCarter, right. you're talking about somebody that can route, he mm-hmm. wasn't going to run by you. But, man, he sit there and give you that dip yeah. and, you know, get that stick, man. It was, it yeah. was like – it was like slow motion. I'm like, come on, man. And he was there, next thing you know, bam, he come up out that route, man. So I was a big fan of Keenan McCardle too, you know what I mean? But they usually, you know, yeah. okay, this was the guy that was going to hit you with the dagger, you know what I mean, and get you at yeah. any time. And he got me in the playoffs, man. I mean, I was all on it. And I'm, and that thing still haunt me to this day, you know, to get beat for a touchdown, a bomb mm-hmm. in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, route, hey, route, yeah. route running. I mean, telephone, route running is a craft, man. People don't yeah, understand. It is. Like, it is. Like Isaac Bruce, man, that's a route running fool. That's you know what a mean? route running dude right there. Yes. And that was yeah. on that old turf. He's just <laughs> that old 18-yard speed cut dig. I'm like, not a lot of people can do that. So I think when you talk about categorizing, I don't know if you guys do it amongst yourself, like – 
you got receivers that's like the goats. You know, that's when you mm -hmm. talk about a level with, you know, the TOs and the Randys and the Jerry's. But mm -hmm. then I always like to categorize, okay, they're the, they're the best everything. But I look at, okay, this, he's a route guy. Like the right. best yeah. route guys. You know, route right. guys, right. Is just, it's not always different yeah. to the, the goat guys. Like, you know, right. like you yep. to, you know, some guys are just, you know, route. And Keenan McCardle is one of those guys that can route, that mm -hmm. ain't going to run by you. Uh, Isaac Bruce had the speed, but Isaac, he can route, you know, you be sitting there like, oh, you know, shit, just his movement, everything kind of looked the same, smooth and, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's like, man, it's different categories for everything, you know, but yeah. I'd be interested to know, like, to yo, as, as a receiver, you know, you feel like you can be anybody You going up there. That's the attitude you're supposed to have. But mm -hmm. did you like the little guys or do you like the big guys that, that come in like the bigger corners, like the Richard Shermans and all that stuff myself, or did you, like to go against the quicker guys, so you can just manhandle nah. them and stuff like that. Yeah, personally, I like I like the, the quicker guys. I already knew, like, if it was a long arm guy, you like your Bobby Taylors and things of that nature. Right, right, right. I knew that I was for me based on how I practice and who I practice against, because I practice against some of the smaller guys. So that basically, like I said, if I can beat those guys, I know in a game those taller guys, those longer guys, when you they mm -hmm. have to open up and their gates are a bit longer. Mm -hmm. They had a lot. They had a lost cause. I like mm -hmm. to challenge myself against the smaller guys because I knew that I presented the challenge for them. So if I mm -hmm. could basically, like I said, have some success against those smaller guys, then the big guys were were, were no problem. But okay. again, I knew coming into the games, just as I looked at you know smaller guys as a challenge, they looked at me the same way. So mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to get their best. Mm -hmm. You get right. what I'm saying? Animal. Bobby Taylor was my kryptonite, dog. I just, I, could, I yeah, I, 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 I wasn't scared of big corners because I could out quick them, but Bobby Taylor was my kryptonite. I just could what? not beat that yeah. dude. Like yeah, I was, was long, long, man. He was, he was long. long. He, was, he, he was taller than Sherman, ain't he? Oh yeah, yeah he was a legit yeah, six Taylor. three. He was yeah, a legit yeah. six three. But like Bro, I said, Patrick yeah. Sertain and Sam Madison, like they didn't give me no issues. Like, but like mm -hmm. Bobby Tate, like man, that dude was my kryptonite, man. Wow. Dude, <laughs> when you, when you, hey, when you talk about walking the park, oh yeah, he's on that list. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm on that. Oh, so we gonna make up? That's gonna be a new list, huh? Oh come on, bro. I'm, bro it, hey, you see what I gotta do with this? law? You see yeah. what I gotta <laughs> deal with this guy, man? I'm just saying. No, he's not keeping it real. I'm just yes, saying for, for him. I'm talking about for him. Everybody, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. different people who who did it was like the matchup was easy. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, right. yeah. It's, it's like you know when, that. it's like watching the last dance when Jordan looked down at the video. And he uh -huh. was like Gary Payton. I had no problem with the glove. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. He said, yeah, man, right. That was that was just part of my preparation. Like I said, I looked at a lot of film, this, that, and the other. But again, mm -hmm. like I said, I progress as as I played. I progressively got better. When you talk about that ascension of of, of skill set and talent, like I said, that's mm -hmm. what I was doing pretty much every year. I tried to find. I tried to get better every year. And then as I got faster and I caught up with the speed of the game, and then my knowledge of the game increased as well. Then, like I said, it was just for me, like I said, it was easy. You know what I mean? But I knew mm -hmm. there were certain guys that presented a lot of challenges. It was guys like yourself, uh, Champ Bailey. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I had some little scuffles with with uh, Dre Bly, but he was one of those guys. He was like real yeah. pesky, you know what I mean? Right, so, yeah. you, know, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it was like Dwayne Corbett on my end. He pesky, Dwayne <laughs> there Corbett. There you go. Yep, there Damn. you go. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, that, that, that was a part of that, yeah, part of that mentality that I had, man. And like I said, I, want, I necessarily... Felt like I had a chip on my shoulder. I just wanted to. I just wanted to keep continuing to work and work and work. So then, until I became, until I came up, became a household name to where guys like, okay, this is a guy we got to watch out for. You know, I wanted. I wanted to be sure. Like on during the course of the week, defensive coordinators, they was like, okay, this eighty-one, they circle me. You know what I mean? He's about right. to be a problem. And I right. really, I tried to continue that as my, as, as my seasons and as my, my career uh, progressed. You're, you're still a problem. Anyway, we're, <laughs> <laughs> we, we here with Pro no, Football. Hey, hey, Hash, I, got, I, got, yeah, I got one for building. you, Hash. I got a, I got a question for you. Like, cause you always say you never got the um, number one, you know, you always fight to get the number one, but how do you say, uh, did you embrace your number two role? Say, okay, you know what? I probably ain't going to be, you know, this. Mm -hmm. How hard was it for you? Cause you probably, you know, at some point you're crazy to make it to the NFL. You was that, you was that mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how did, 
it, was it hard for you to embrace to say, okay, I'm going to be the number two guy and wait for my opportunity? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. number two. Wait, hey, whoa. hey, whoa, hey, whoa, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. See, number see, two. I, this is sometimes it's <laughs> the time. Wait, right now is not. Hey, come on. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. What team are you? Hey, Long. See what I got to deal with. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey. Wait a minute. Hey. See, un hey. unlike unlike T, my confidence in myself has never wavered. I've okay, always okay, thought okay. inwardly <laughs> as myself as a number one, right? Right. But in my career being the four, the three, sometimes the two. That's right. I remember you got a little too low. <laughs> I, I got some too love, right? Because right. again, when Chris would be out, me and Randy would like, you know, we would do our thing. Like we're one and two and you know, we right. do our right. thing. Right, no. But um, I never thought for one second it was still about me. And I think I would have always had that if I was a number one getting paid a hundred million dollars a year, I wouldn't have had, it's all about me. I, I'm going to play my role the best of my ability at any point in time. Because I just, mm -hmm. I honestly thought that it's about every player doing their job. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like the quarterback, all you got to do is throw it. Because I remember Denny Green used to always say, uh, especially when uh, Call Pepper, Dante Call Pepper was a rookie, he was like, it's not your car, but I'm going to give you the keys. And that's mm -hmm. how everybody was. Like everybody just, just drive. It's not your car. You just do your role and you'll be okay. successful. The ball will find you throughout the system. That's how I felt. Hey, mm -hmm. Ty Law, it sounds like he would have been a great candidate for the Bill Belichick system, you know, because, you know, Absolutely. that's kind of right. his... It is kind of his motto. Yeah. Everybody yeah. do your job, do your role. Yeah. So you would have yep. been a great Belichick guy. Unfortunately, you never made it over there. Well, here's, um, here's where you could, I mean, you could have become really famous. Had you I, am in famous. That I'm, I'm, I am no, famous. I am famous. I'm famous. You're famous <laughs> now because I, you're, on the, you're, you're on this podcast. You're on the Get Your Popcorn Red there's, Podcast. There's your live, T. That was your live. That was your live. You're welcome. Exactly. You're welcome. Right. right. <laughs> so let me tell you a little story, Law. So... I, after I was leaving Minnesota, I was a free agent, and I went to visit the Dolphins, then the Chiefs, and then the Jets. So I got to the Jets that, you know, I was there all day, going back to the hotel, agent calls and they want to sign you, we'll, we'll, we'll go back, end up signing like 9, 10 o'clock that night. The next day would have been my visit to the Patriots. So that year, of course, we played, we went up to Foxborough, we played y'all, that's when they knocked out Bledsoe. And mm -hmm. in comes this young raggedy kid named Tom Brady yeah. and the rest mm -hmm. is history. So I could easily go back in my mind saying, yes, if I would have went to New England, my career would have been great. But you don't know that. I could have went there. I could have got hit by right. a bus. I could have, you know, my whole life would have <laughs> been different. Doesn't mean it would have been better. But at this, but, I don't but, even think like that. You know what well, I'm saying? I'm with T.O. The likelihood of you coming there, because mm -hmm. you up there with Chris Carter, uh, right, Randy Moss. Yeah, the way the system is, it's like okay, get out there and prove yourself and get open. Because one thing about Tom, and I think a lot of receivers had to adjust to that. He really don't give a damn if you used to getting the ball, you mm -hmm. know, twelve time, twelve balls right. a game. He don't care. Mm -hmm. He like he trying to win, and I think mm -hmm. that's what separates him. Like like you, to yo, you can go to Tom. Like look, he like okay, I'm gonna get you the ball, but if you get doubled and tripled. Mm. He ain't gonna do it. He ain't gonna yeah. do it. He gonna, he gonna, he, hey, hey, I, I got you next game. And I've right. seen it happen so many times because sometimes the receivers actually come out pretty frustrated sometimes, like, damn. But when you win it, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. There's nothing, it nothing, it nothing you can say. There's nothing it, you can exactly. Say. But and as a competitor, right. and you know how you, you are as a receiver, you want the damn ball. Like Keyshawn said, like, you throw me the damn ball. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I mean? Right. But and, up there, and Tom, and you got to have a personality in a, in a, Leader like Tom, because a lot of lesser quarterbacks will give in, you know, mm. to the pressure of the big dog receivers and all that. But True. Tom don't give a shit. I'm trying That's to right. tell you. Yeah, I, I, think I, in, I think in 2020 with the Twitter world, I think I'd be, I would definitely be a number one because there's so many people I see on Twitter. They show the release and it's clean, <laughs> but they don't get the ball. <laughs> I, had, I had a bunch of clean releases, but the ball went to Randy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll be yeah, all yeah. over Twitter right now. Like, check me out. B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. See, right. Tom would have got you that. Uh, right. And, and obviously, since we're on the uh, topic of speaking of, of Tom Brady, I think when you, everybody, again, I'm sure he's your greatest QB of all time or what have you. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, I like Joe Montana. I like 
and then I then I then I go Tom Brady. It's almost like this whole LeBron, Kobe, right. and MJ comparison. Everybody's gonna put MJ on the top because of his six championships. You know what I mean? He's never been beat. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady, that same type of category. Yeah, he has a number right. of championships, but he's lost some too. So that's mm-hmm. where people factor in that. But I do love the fact that what separates Tom and I understand why people put him as now one of the greatest of all time is because mm-hmm. of the way he wins, the way that he prepares. When, mm-hmm. And you talk about, like I said, some of the no name receivers that have made names for themselves right. in that yeah. system. As you just alluded to Ty, he's not going to force the ball. Tom Brady, as the game progresses, he looks right. at matchups. He, he right. makes, the, he makes the most unt- untimely of plays um, especially you can talk about Grunk, Gronkowski. He's right. kind of like he's been his 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 lifeline in a sense, but he realizes that Gronkowski is a nightmare matchup for a number of DBs. Matchup, yeah. mm-hmm. matchup proud linebackers and things of that nature. And I like the fact of his ball placements. He's very cerebral. He's a very Absolutely. smart guy. He's not necessarily a, a, a game manager. All of that, he does that. But it, his, it's so effortless that you don't even notice it. And then now you think about him being with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Look at what he's done with that culture. Look mm-hmm. at what he's done. Like initially, like I said, look at a couple weekends ago when he played the Green Bay Packers. They look dead in the water. They come out, it's 10-0. And then they go on to reel off 38 Low. unanswered points. That's not, I mean, that's, that doesn't happen. You can't right. say that that would have right. happened with Jameis Winston. Uh, there, there, right. the quarterback right. position. Mm-hmm. Even some of the games that they've come back and won. So I think in your mind, uh, not really in your mind, can you just share with us what you obviously experienced watching him winning the Super Bowls that, that you've won with that, with, with that team and with Tom? What is it about him that makes him extra special that I guess for our listeners mm-hmm. um, that don't know, that want to know exactly what it's like on an everyday basis, right. you got to see it in practice and then you got mm-hmm. to see it, you know, orchestrated right. on game day. Well, I mean, one thing that, that, that always stuck out to me uh, with, with Tom is his eagerness to learn and get better because he was always like, I used to go down at, at, uh, at six in the morning to run, run my miles before everybody else get in. Oh. Only other guy down there, I was already in, here come Tom coming in. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And Tom was always the last one to leave. So he's one of the first guys in, one of the last guys out. Mm-hmm. And we used to rip him up. We gave him hell when he first got in there. When we talking, but he will always come back. He's mm-hmm. in the weight room. He's a skinny kid. He spent time in the weight room like he was a, like he was a lineman. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I have never seen a quarterback now you know, awesome. is his arm as strong as Drew Bledsoe's and all that? No, nope. nope. he ain't close. Mm-hmm. Drew Bledsoe had a cannon, you know all what right. I mean? But it was something about his willingness to compete at all times. And he told mm-hmm. me something. He was told me and Lori Malloy, we was going out to our team dinner. We was going out, I think was, we was going to Capitol Grill, the whole team. So we're making the rookies pay or whatever. And that's when Drew had got hurt. And Tom, he, me and Lori was walking. He was like, I ain't giving it back. Mm. You know, that, 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 that that's a rookie. out of his mouth. No, no, he was he wasn't even a rookie yet. I think he was like in the second, second year. Second year, when, okay. when, he, when he first when when he was in his second or third year when he, when he got uh hurt against Lewis the Jets, hit him. right, 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 right. Well, against the Jets. So anyway, man, when he said so, me and Lori, we looking at him like you know, oh, that's the spirit. That's how you supposed to go. But like now, when the man got a hundred million dollars, when he come back, you 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 gotta go. You gotta sit back mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. He wasn't he wasn't messing around, and it took Coach Belichick to have you know. I, could I could I say it on the podcast? The balls, yeah, yeah. absolutely, to do that, <laughs> to do that, and and stick with him. Mm-hmm. And after he, you just gave this man a hundred million dollars. Mm. You know, Tom wasn't messing around. He was like, once he get it, it's it's done. And he has kept it, you know, ever since. But he has that awesome. same mentality from that first year. Then now he's Tom Brady. Now it's like, okay, guess what? Year four. Five. Mm. He still had the same thing, mentality. like he, like mentality, like he trying to prove something to somebody, you know, every day. His competitiveness mm-hmm. and then willing, willingness to lead. Mm-hmm. He'll jump up in your face. He was one of the type of quarterbacks. You know, another one is like usually quarterbacks stand back here when everybody mm-hmm. jumping, hitting heads, banging heads. You don't see very many quarterbacks getting in the mix. Right. Tom was up in the mix. In the mix. There, like it was, it was different for us. I know I ain't seen it because you know Drew, you know he'd jump up, but. He was 
Over there, back, jumping. Back over here. <laughs> yeah, he was back, you know, in the back, you know, patting his head. Yeah. Tom was up in the middle, banging everybody's head. I just thought that was, you know, different from a quarterback standpoint. He was a wow. part of the team in, in, in so many ways that you would think he's here, you mm -hmm. know, and there's everybody else. You no, know, Tom is ingrained in the locker room, and, and and it was just an amazing thing. It wasn't like a lot of teams where it's the quarterback. He's over there, you know, got right. the red shirts on, and right. then you can't nobody else mess with them. You know what I mean? Awesome. It wasn't like that with Tom, man. It, it was awesome, man. He kept that same work ethic. So I don't think anybody outworks him, and nobody's as competitive to him. I mean, you hear the Jordan stories of Michael Jordan, how competitive he is. Mm -hmm. That's how Tom Brady is, man. That dude don't like to lose or nothing. And if you get him in practice, he coming mm -hmm. back at you. You know what I mean? He getting up in love your face. It. You know, he, 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 hey, he, he a dog, man. Love so it, how, love how it. Do you, how do you think that, you know, obviously he's doing well right now. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, when he basically made that, uh, you know, made that switch to go from New England to Tampa, what were your thoughts on that? That's one. And then obviously now they have, uh, they've recently acquired uh, with the, with, I'm thinking, uh, speaking of the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they recently acquired Antonio Brown. Mm -hmm. How do you think he will fit in with uh, the receivers that they have with Godwin and Mike Evans and uh, going Miller. forward? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, when first by Tom leaving New England, you know, and I'm on record, you know, saying it because before he made the decision, I'm like, people relax. I'm not surprised at all. You know, you heard rumblings and you knew certain things that was going on, but he doesn't owe anybody anything, man. I mean, that guy right. gave 20 years of his life. He's right. never got an opportunity to be a free agent. He was taking less money than what he deserved for the sake of the team for a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if he wanted to go dip his toe in the water and get another atmosphere, you know, in Florida with some weapons. You right. know, <laughs> I mean, he don't, he don't owe anybody anything. So, I mean, I wasn't surprised at all when everybody was going crazy, you know, about that. You know what I mean? So he's happy. You know, I had a kind of a feeling that I didn't want to see him go because it's, it's different to see Tom Brady in another right, uniform. Right. You right. know, it's different right. with him. But, man, enjoy. Do, do you, man. We Like I said, you. you're still going to have a statue in New England. Absolutely. Even, even if you went down there and lose every game, let's say he right. lost every damn game. Guess what? Right. Still to go. Right. Still, still to go. go. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's still going to have his statue in Gillette yeah. Stadium somewhere. Yep. Now, when it comes to Antonio Brown, I think that that is the best possible situation that Antonio can go to because mm -hmm. one, as alpha as you are, you're never going to out, out alpha Tom. No, sir. You, right. you, you're coming into a locker room that already have two Pro Bowl wide receivers. So mm -hmm. you, ain't, you, you, ain't, you ain't that guy right now. You've been out mm -hmm. of the game for so long. You know what I mean? Even though you're the man before right. you left, but come, you right. come into another locker room that two guys already established. Mm -hmm. Then you get Gronk and all that. So he couldn't come into a better situation to have somebody that can, you know, pull him to the side and say, yo, man, this ain't how this is how we're gonna get down around here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He he I don't think as great a player as he is, he's probably it's only so many guys that he's gonna respect as far yep. as on the level that, that he'll actually listen to them. Yep. Because when you're that good, as Antonio Brown is, sometimes like I ain't got to listen to no damn body. You right, know what right. I mean? But he's going to respect Tom Brady enough and those other guys enough and Bruce Aarons enough knowing that, okay, I got another opportunity. They took a chance because I'm surprised somebody didn't step up a lot earlier. Just the fact that he is that good at playing football. Right. football. He right. keeps himself in great shape. Hopefully he gets in there and, 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 and just fits in and he is still – the Antonio Brown that we all know, love on the field. You on know the what I mean? Field. They, they, on the field for that production. The off the field antics, hopefully he's learned enough to say, you know what? It ain't worth it. I it mean, ain't. you know, $38 million, they ain't none of that stuff. Right, that. right. You know what right. I mean? So, you know, I, I'm just glad that he got another opportunity and I'm looking forward to it. So if there's yeah. enough, enough balls to spread around, mm -hmm. I don't see how anybody's going to, uh, you know, match him unless it's uh, Kansas City right now. Yeah, Absolutely. and with that statement, with that statement, if there's enough balls to go around, Tom Brady's going to get it to get him around. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. because I think you know what that's I mean? again, that's what separates him. And just watching him, like I said, I don't get into the debates of you know who's the greatest. Like I said, I give my opinion on who I think. Right. But like I said, he for me, like I said, he's right up there at the top with with with, with Joe Montana. But when you think about what separates him, bro, it's ball, it's accuracy, it's ball placement. He's very cerebral. He's going to preach and out read. He's going to take matchups. And he he rarely makes mistakes. And he's coming. He's going to come through in the clutch. He's going to come right. through in the clutch. Yeah. Guys, some guys will falter. 
this is when he elevates his game and he's right. elevated it to a stand to a to a to a standpoint to where again he's put a stamp on that goal with that with that greatest of all time type of statement that everybody right. category that everybody puts him in. So it's yep. well oh, deserved. Yeah. But even when Tom Brady is stinking up the joint, because it's been times early in the game that so he's stinking up the joint, but guess what? He hmm. don't stink all game. He gonna come back. Go. He, 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 he figures it out. Yeah. He, he he figures it out. And I would like to say you know, like when they make that, you know, argument like, you know, your opinion on Joe Montana, Tom Brady. Right. I look at it like this. Tom Brady as far as he worked with one Hall of Fame receiver. Mm -hmm. that, 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 and Randy for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. One time. Mm -hmm. And you see what yeah. he's done. Everything else, all these numbers, you know, they're good players, but they're, mm -hmm. you know, a, a bunch of number twos and number threes that he actually made better, you know, players. I mean, the oh, one man. time he get a guy like Randy Moss, you know. Yeah, out of here. Bam. It's gone. Hey, you know what I mean? See, so that's, I was like, that's, 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 that's why I was like. My, that, that's, that's, my, that's, my, that's my minus right there because when you have a goat and Randy, goat and Brady, and y'all 18 and 0, and y'all don't win a Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you, 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 you giving him a strike for that, man? Yeah, yeah. That ain't, yeah. Uh, I don't give him no strike for that. You it's like, it, you yeah, but they Brady? didn't. It's not like they didn't perform well in the Super Bowl. You talking about you one game? Randy you Moss? you performed eighteen games. They got all the record. They got the touchdown record and all that. They game. broke. They broke our. Yeah, they broke our Vikings record. But it's all good. But yeah, speaking of records though. Short. You come hey. up short in the Super Bowl. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Be, speaking of best of all time, so, so before we get out of here, we got Ty Law, the NFL Hall of Famer, with us. Um, yep, give yep. us your top five defensive backs. Like no, no particular order. Mm -hmm. You can put yourself in it or not. But give no, us I don't like. Five. I don't. I don't like. I don't like to uh, do that. Put myself in because I mean I'm the type. You know, if it's a competition, you know, I've mm -hmm. always I've always said this. Like you know, everybody looked at who's the best, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I I tend to get left out of the conversation. That's fine. But mm -hmm. I got my goddamn popcorn ready right now. Oh yeah, yeah. well That's you number you about. number one in our bush then, Doc. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, I believe from a competitive standpoint. Now mm -hmm. I'm just talking, talking about myself. Let's say if we got Prime mm -hmm. in my place, the goat, the cornerback, okay. Rod Woodson. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, you know Mike Haynes was a Mike Haynes was a beast. Let's talk about the real mm -hmm. champ. I buy. If it was a, if you know. Let's take the safest corner, where they read all that. Mm -hmm. If we going out there and we playing a, a, a package, at least a nickel. Mm -hmm. Oh, law in the lineup. <laughs> we, I, 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 I'm we, in the lineup somewhere, somewhere somehow. Somewhere, you up in? I feel I, you. I'm in the lineup because of because now we have to compete amongst each other uh -huh. to right. go out and let's see who's gonna crack this lineup. I ain't talking about careers and this and that. Right, right, yeah. right. Competitiveness. Damn it, I'm in the lineup. And you know what, what I'm trying somewhere. to explain to people that in from 2010 to 2020, the number one position on the defensive field is the nickel corner. Because I got to be able to go inside and outside. Uh, for the all of NFL, you was right. only an outside guy. If I have a guy that can go inside and outside, that makes my that's, defense and that, and that's, very that's good. What I, and that's what I did. That's why I said, so let's say somebody say you ain't going to be the top two. Well, damn it, I bet I bet you three. I I'll bet be I'm in that nickel right. packet. You know what right. I mean? I'm gonna so I can make be at sure nickel. Like I can that, rotate but, the safety if I got but, two, and then I can line up. I, okay, yeah. Right, but I say prime number one, you know, and I'm a, I had to say my piece on me, but I'm going to give everybody else they love. I say mm -hmm. um, Mike Haynes was a bad boy, man. I mean, people be slipping on Mike Haynes. You know, Mike, was, Mike, Mike was a real deal. Big, big, yeah. fast guy. Um, I say, mm -hmm. who else can get down? Hmm. Brown yeah. Yeah. Number three. Woo! Yeah, you it's so many. I mean, Rod, Rod, Rod wasn't before Rod he was safety. Go put in there. Rod, Rod was a freak out because he can tackle too. You know, not only he can he cover. Yeah, he was a big boy. I was a big boy. You damn right. Uh, uh, Mel Blunt. He, you ever see him play? Put them uh, bangs on you. What they had to change the uh, defensive uh, uh, yeah. penalties for him. They, yeah, yeah, that's why yeah, holding. Yeah. That's why they made holding. Yeah, yeah and guess what? It was the Mel Blunt rule. I got to put. I got to give. I yeah. got a prima popcorn out again, and guess what the rule yeah. is now? Ty Law rule. The Ty Law rule. You got <laughs> the rule. It's a Ty Law rule. It's a male blunt Ty Law rule, yeah. But anyway, yeah, it, was, it was the yeah, same the thing. Law actually, rule. No, actually, it was the same thing as, as male blunt ruled in. They tagged it that. Mm -hmm. But then, after Bill Polian, 
after we yep, played those and yep. and we was jacking them up at the line of scrimmage. They was throwing the thing and they was complaining and then they tagged it the Ty Law rule. It's really, you know, whatever awesome. dad something Ty Law rule. But you know what I mean? So I took it as a compliment. <laughs> You know myself. You know That's what I mean. Hey, yeah, yeah. I, 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 one time, T. I was took Marv. I, I tried to put his ass in the Gatorade. You know <laughs> hey, Who if that was if that, uh, Marvin Harrison, I remember oh, it. Yeah. If that was if we if that was social media today, oh man, that'd be oh, everywhere. Oh man, that'd that be hey, everywhere. That was funny, but you know that that was like we tried to do that. We tried to jam somebody so they like ride them all the way to the sideline to try to find other teams. Gatorade, if you can get them that long. All right. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I was, oh, I was so close. <laughs> I, you know how to try to spill the whole Gatorade table? Everything. Yeah. Knock it all over. Yeah, but Knock I, it all and, over. And I think, um, and somebody can lock down, and it was even younger than younger than me. Hey, Darrell Reeves is a bad boy, too, man, when it comes yes. to, like, you know, playing man to man, man. Darrell, 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 Darrell was Darrell nice with his, man. He, and, yes. and I'm not being biased because your hometown, Al Cooper boy, went to St. High School and all that, but Mm-hmm. That dude can oh, play, wow. man. He can play. That's cool. That's all yeah, right. Yeah, we got we got we got three um uh, who else I got that came high school. high school. Who else? Uh Mike Dicker. Oh myself, wow. Uh yeah. Tony Tony Dorsett. What, I mean, he was in the same street as me, but he actually just went right. well. Darrell Rivas, Sean Gilbert, Jonathan oh, Ball went a receiver, first round of Kansas City. You know what yeah, I mean? Y'all, so, got, y'all, got a, y'all got a Hall of Fame within a Hall of Fame at your high school. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Please. But you know what? Compared to I was Clowning with Willie Mack because Long Beach Poly, you guys are there. Yeah, we got a right. So the out of twenty years, look it up. The most first rounders in the last twenty years came from Aliquippa and Long Beach Poly. Difference is with y'all, y'all got three, four thousand students. Yeah, yeah, uh, 4,800 actually. Right. (laughs) How many people on the football team? (laughs) Y'all have (laughs) thirty-five. Yeah, yeah, we got twenty-eight. Everybody played both ways. Everybody. Everybody play both wow. ways, so we just That's putting funny. them, we putting them out there like that, man. So you know, just give Al Cooper some love. So I'd be clowning with Willie Mack, say, hey, "Y'all got so many damn students. Somebody got to get in. Somebody got to be good, right? <laughs> there it is. Right. Well, see, right, there man. it is, ladies and gentlemen. Ty Long, get your popcorn yes, ready. Yep. Podcast. We appreciate hold you coming on, 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 man. Hey, hey, hey so bro, go ahead, give us your on, plugs, man. man. Give us your we plugs. Are, hey, hey, just, hey, we, we, what you working on, man? Right, what exactly. you got? Hey, we ain't forgot. We know you coming with something. We're going to plug it, but we want to give you your love. We want to give you your roses while you're on okay. the show. We want to okay. give everybody a shout out. Give, a, give everybody really a chance to know who you are. Who right. we're speaking with, and every you know, we got our listeners. We 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 we're growing every <laughs> week. But, you know, at, yeah, we want to give you a roses, but yeah, we want to at least identify, give you a roses while you're here. We're talking right. to Ty Law, 2019 Hall of Famer. Yes, sir. In fellow Hall of Famer at that, man. So I, I like I said, I know I haven't talked to you since or personally, but I know I sent out a tweet congratulating everybody. You know, I got my deal with the with the Hall of Fame. So right, you know, right. I, had to, I, had to, I had to, you know, send out my 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 standard congratulatory uh tweets or what have you. But now that I got you on the show, I want to extend in person uh, a congratulation, man. It's well Thank deserved, you, man. man. Uh you like you said, we've talked about some of your accomplishments and accolades. Um, like I said, I wish I could have played on the Super Bowl champion ship team but it's not in everybody's cars but dude right. as we've uh, illustrated and, and and basically shared with our listeners today bro and you you even said it yourself your competitive spirit you may not be you know tall and in, in, in height and stature but your play spoke out and it stood out on the football field and so for me like i said playing against you i know you I knew you were one of the top guys in, in, in the national football league you've proven that Everything that you've you've garnered, you've deserved, and man, I just want to give you your roses right here and get your popcorn man. ready uh, show. So we're in. You know, we love you. We know you have a lot of things going on. Uh, obviously, post career, can you just share with us? You know, some of your business ventures, what you got going on, so our listeners can know and really, you know, share with us like what you got right. going on and where we can find it. Okay, well, uh, before I got into this, I, I owned. I started in 2012. Launch uh, uh, with one store indoor. Uh, family entertainment trampoline parts is called Launch. Um, and we took that from one store, you know, in Rhode Island to uh, 36 uh, locations nationwide, you know, and, wow. um, you awesome. know, just me and my partner. And um, fortunately, you know, for myself, right before COVID, you know, because mm-hmm. I was ready to move on, I've been in for seven years, uh, I got out. <laughs> You know, what I mean, so wow. it was a, it was it was well, a blessing. It, 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 it was it was it was a blessing. Now, you know, everybody told me you smart this and that. No, that was that was dumb luck. It was just it was just a timing thing, man. Yeah. It's so unfortunate that, you know, people are struggling, you know, right now. 
that business is actually going through some tough times. I'm still a huge advocate for it, but you know, you know, I'm no longer an officer or the owner of that one. So when people see it, they still associated me, but I actually sold uh, the entry because then I was building a sale in the first place, but this is what I'm doing now. I'm, um, uh, like I said, a huge advocate for launch, but I have a, a vodka. I'm investing in a vodka company called V1. Uh, we are the official vodka TO of our Pro Football Hall of Fame. You know, man, we got double oh, gold okay. first place at nice. San Fran International uh, Spirits Competition. We're the only vodka in the world, the only in the world that uses 100% organic spelt compared to corn, potatoes, wheat, or rye when it comes to uh, vodka. And okay. um, I'm just like the COVID and everything is kind of you know, slowing some things down, but just building the relationships. Uh, we're, we're distributed throughout New England. RNDC is our uh, national distributor, but right now we're in uh, all of New England. Uh, we're in New Jersey, like I said, Ohio, like mm -hmm. official vodka, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And then, nice. um, you know, we got plenty of flavors. I got this nice little vanilla for the, for the, for the, okay. for the gold, you know, little okay. gold tint. We, okay. we soak it in. Okay. Madag uh, Madagascar and vanilla beans. My personal favorite, we call this the pick six. This is the cucumber. Cucumber, and, uh, okay. Mix this, mix this with lemonade. Man, it's off the chain, man. You know, it's, it's off the chain. But like I said, the only Bach in the world, double gold first place. Uh, you uh, guys out there, West Coast, you know, uh, you know, T.O. you just saying, friend, we won yeah, yeah. Uh, double gold first in the international uh, spirits competition. You know what oh, I mean? Okay. So, so yeah. those are the three flavors. You got your regular, your cucumber, and and, and this is uh, vanilla. Vanilla, but no, vanilla. we have uh, we have triple berry, we have grapefruit, coconut, hazelnut, and then oh, for the Christmas for you ladies, I'm gonna send y'all something. So before oh, you get out, you I gotta know show y'all this was one. My, yeah, hey, all you know. right, my hey, that's hey. my dog. Hey, hey, sir! I, got I ain't you. too proud to bag your ass. I was going, hey, I was going like, yo, where can I get some? I'm not an alcohol. I'm not an alcohol drinker all that much, but I will take a little sippy sip. A little, a little, sip, 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 a little right sippy here. cup. This is a limited edition, and we only made five thousand bottles. They already sold out. Now I was a little Ooh. suspect. I'm like peppermint, vodka, like candy cane. Oh, eh. okay, but man. They, they came out right. Uh, they, it came out right, man. But it's just for the holiday seasonal, man. So, awesome. but hey, when we get off with y'all, send it to me. It'll be there for y'all next week. A package for both of y'all, man. Oh, man, yeah. Man, I, we I appreciate it. That. I appreciate I that. that. Now, how, I mean, now how, can they, how can they find this art? Is it online? How, where yeah, can like, they find it? For, for every state that I'm uh, distributed in, because mm -hmm. uh, the laws with alcohol is different from wine, you know, which is a spirit. Mm -hmm. So, I have to be licensed in the state to get it online. So in the states okay. like uh, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey, you can go online and get it because I'm distributed there. But as we're going nationwide, I'm going, I got Michigan now, you know. Okay. And you what's know, that Canada website? Give us that website. I'll go, go to uh, v, uh, v1baca.com. Check us out. Uh, uh, v1baca.com. Yep. And, and at v1baca.com. Yep. And at v1baca on the Instagram. Check us out. Follow us, man. It's a... Uh, it's, it's a SB great venture. I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm enjoying myself, man. I'm enjoying myself because this is like, uh, you know, it's a dream come true to be involved in something like this because it's been around for 15 years. When I sold out, I liked wow. it so much. It, it all happened from him giving me something as a congratulations mm -hmm. uh, for the Hall of Fame. Mesh for awesome. mutual friend. Once I got it, I was like, man, I need to help tell your story. So, you know, I put awesome. my money where my mouth is. I bought in from an equity standpoint, so I'm not a spokesperson, man. This is true ownership and trying to mm -hmm. take this brand to the next level and to have those partnerships with the Hard Rock down here mm -hmm. in, um, in in Miami mm -hmm. when they open back up at Gillette Stadium, of course, Jet Stadium, and now the mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. This is, uh, you know, this is this is what I'm doing now, man. I'm all in. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate it, man. Congratulations to that. And Thank you, brother. Me. And yeah, obviously, like I said, we, you know, obviously you being a partner, uh, where we're going, what we're going through as a country, you know, mm -hmm. we as, you know, African Americans, we need to support each other. So I'm going to take right. your congratulatory gift, your gift, <laughs> of, of that, but I'm going to support you. I'm going to support. I'm going to go online as well. And I'm going to support your business, something. man. So everybody Appreciate that's listening, um, as you said, as he said, you know, he's licensed in certain areas. Um, if you want to get some of this vodka, uh, go to v1vodka.com. Um, go to Instagram. It's at V1 Vodka. Go check yeah. it out. My man, Ty Law, a uh, very entrepreneurial businessman. And uh, yeah, man, we appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, it's been Anytime, a time, man. It's been a delight, man. We thank you so much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Thanks for having me, fellas, man. And like I said, after I get off with your hat, hit me that text, man. Y'all already know. Next week for sure.
All, all right, right I appreciate it, T. All right. All right. All right, all right, love. All right, all right Peace. Peace. All right, later. No doubt. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the great Ty Law on Get Your Popcorn Ready podcast, NFL Hall of Fame cornerback. Man, that, that's he, he's doing his thing, man. He's doing his thing. No, yeah, no doubt. I'm definitely looking for, I will be checking my mail. Um, I will be looking for those uh, those, those vodka. Um, mm-hmm. V1 vodka. Yeah, no doubt. So mm-hmm. uh, everybody, again, go check out the, his vodka. You can go online, V, V is in Valentine, onevodka.com. And you can go check it out too. Uh, go to the social media. Uh, check it out as well. V1 Vodka at V1 Vodka. So y'all check it out. That brings up that brings us to our three and out segment. Oh, uh, with Ty Law. So I think um, again, the three and out segment takes us uh, through the the past show and kind of discussed um, three things we took away from the show. So what's up? Uh, yeah, yeah. Things you took away from T. Yeah, yeah. The number one that really stood out, and it, it, it immediately I wrote it down, and it, I didn't really have to write write it down, but mm-hmm. it stuck out to me when he basically said that once Drew Bledsoe got hurt, and then here comes you know Tom Brady in to replace him. Uh, he said he remembered going to Crap- Capitol Grill. Uh, him and Larry Malora they were together, and somehow they ran across Tom Brady, and Brady looked at both of them and told him he's like, "I'm not giving it back." Mm, yes, yes, yeah. yeah, and he has done and lived lived up to that statement Absolutely. more than anyone can imagine, and he Absolutely. never gave it back. Yeah, and again, that's it's, it's not I don't, the funny thing is like people can look at that and okay, he was being cocky, he was be, it's whatever. Like somebody at that time of your career, it's hard to say that. It would have been hard for you to say that to Jerry Rice in the locker room when you were a young player. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it's like, cause you, you, you feel that inside, but for him to actually come out and say that to some veterans on the team, cause those are the pro, right. Bowl, those are superstars at the right. time, Ty Law, and Loy, Loy and Malloy. And he was right. like the, you know, the young whippersnapper on the team. So that's yeah. uh that's a, that speaks volumes about Tom Brady's confidence in himself. Yep. 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 Uh, yeah. And I think the other one, um, I'll let you do the last one, but the other one I think was um, I, I like the relationship um, that Ty Law and Bill Belichick, um, had and I think I mean a lot of people watch 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 these games and watch the Super Bowls or what have you. You would think that you know Bill Belichick is probably in more of an offensive guy, but he had a relationship with both sides of the ball. So you think about the Willie McGinnises, the Seymours, um, the Teddy Bruskies, and everybody that played on on those D, uh, on those Super Bowl champion teams. But Ty Law let us in on a secret that he and the relationship that uh, he and Bill Belichick had is that, you know, he went to him and he basically told him like, yo, coach, I'm going to get a flag early on in the game or have <laughs> to establish yeah. himself. And so, yeah. hey, Bill Belichick, hey, he was all for it. He goes, hey, as long as you get it get it done, you do it early in the game, mm-hmm. it's all right, all right with him. So that was, I thought that was very a, a very fascinating uh, story to, to, to hear from, from, from Ty Law. Yeah, and anybody young still playing out there, don't do it in the fourth quarter with two minutes on the clock. Again, because I think the key thing was he did it early in the game to establish the tempo or, you know, establish dominance, if you will, uh, for the the receiver DB competition that was going to happen on during the game. Uh, The third thing for me, you're kind of playing off of that, was how they made the tie law rule. Because remember, when they were playing the Indianapolis Colts every single year, they would jam them at the line and like you said, he had Marvin Harrison out on the Gatorade. You know, he had him, he damned him all the way out of bounds. So he was up like, in that man's jersey. <laughs> he was literally he was wearing his jersey. Right. So it's like to do that and for the NFL to change, okay, you have to you can jam, but you can't hold for consecutive, you know. Um, right. You gotta jam and release. You know what exactly, I mean? exactly. So that's a big deal that they changed that uh again, the Mel Blunt slash Ty Law rule um right. in, in late two thousands. That's crazy. So, yeah. but there it is. Ty Law, we appreciate you coming on, man. You know, like I said, it's, uh, you know, I guess it's doing your thing, CEO, now V1 Vodka, NFL Hall of Famer, Ty Law. Appreciate you. Yeah, no doubt. And again, like I said, I want to give a shout out to this guy's uh, business venture, uh, Vodka Company. Again, you guys go online. Um, I'm definitely, like I said, I'm going to be a supporter. I'm going to support support, you know, some black businesses. And then obviously, like I said, him uh, being a part of this company. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to support. So you guys go out there and support it as well. Um, go to v1vodka.com. And on social media, your Instagram, I think it is, go to at v1vodka. There it is. And don't forget to subscribe on the Himalaya app or wherever you get your podcast. And definitely uh, every week, tune into uh, my YouTube channel. Um, go to youtube.com slash Terrell Owens. 